is a beautiful morning again. Um, I really like this spot. It's very calm and it's a little bit cooler today. It's like 89 downstairs, which is very tolerable. Um, and there's like a gentle breeze, but I'm just thinking about what I want to do today. And I think I'd like to go for a dive in this very clear water. Um, just moving however many miles we moved, eight miles or something, the water's substantially clearer here. Um, so I want to go for a snorkel, but I know we have to make water too. Um, because we used a lot of water yesterday, so we make water today, and I think that's all I've got right now. Just enjoying my coffee out here. It's such a nice way to start the day. We arrived into this idyllic spot here in the Sea of Cortez, Mexico, yesterday afternoon. We've got the place to ourselves. Just us and our friends on our buddy boat, sailing vessel Small World. Here, in this place that at times feels like another planet. Okay. Time to make some water. So this is our plug for it. The inverter is already on because we're using Starlink to upload and some videos. So plugged in. Go ahead and turn on the boost pump. Should we hear something? Hear something whirling? That's good. That was a good first step. <clears throat> that was the, uh, that switch I just flicked. That was the problem that that relay solved. Before we set off on our summer cruise, we gave our water maker some TLC, beginning with replacing the relay switch for our boost pump. This is the boost pump. And what this does is it takes water from below the water line and moves it to the high pressure pump, pump which is above the water line. And for some reason, for the last few years, the switch panel has not worked to activate this pump. So I went into the circuit board of the water maker and I found this relay switch is burned. You can see a little bit of burn mark there. So I went ahead and popped a new relay switch in and it's still not working. Uh, and basically these relay switches are pretty simple. There's a, a power in, so 120 volts, 120 volts, and then there's a 24 volt actuator. So you, we put, apply 24 volts into the switch and a magnet then closes the connection and makes everything work. Uh, I'm getting 120 volts on the other side of the switch so I know it's going to the pump now. And I have a pigtail that I hardwire just for testing purposes. And now it's spinning, kinda. Let's see. There it goes. So the pump is spinning. Now I'm gonna try to see if the relay could power it. This is the this wire is coming out of the relay box. So there should be power and the pump should go on. Or make her plug in. Hit the switch. There it goes. So the relay does work. Sweet. Got a test la water maker. We just hooked our Y valve failed, which is why the air conditioner wasn't working. So I had to hook up the intake. I hear the boost pump going. Let's see water, trying to get to the high pressure pump. See right there? See it almost in the pump? Yeah. Let me, uh, I'm gonna hit a little, a little fresh water. Solid little pressure. Water is flowing out of membranes. This membrane one. We got to test the ppm out of each one. So it's that one membrane is still putting out salty water. Um, maybe it's got a bum membrane. I don't know. What's the ppm? The combine of the two is 700. 500 food safe. It tastes not salty, which is it tastes better than it was at that. I mean, it tastes less salty than it did. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. I changed all the O-rings. I don't know if it's the housing or maybe it's got a bum membrane out of the factory. So we went ahead and ordered a new water maker membrane. Fingers crossed this is what solves our water maker issue. We've been fighting this for the last, I guess, eight months or so since Panama City. Um, and hoping this solves it. So I should be pretty quick at this. I've done it several times now. Um, it's a second membrane in line. I'm gonna pop it out, grease up all the rings again, and hopefully we make good water. It'd be amazing to have that settled. So I'm gonna take it apart now. This thing's about $280. <laughs> nothing, like, nothing will solve a problem like throwing a little money at it. Uh, I did try the cheap solution first though, which was just changing the seals and that didn't work. So I don't really know what else it could be besides this. So here we go. Okay, so I separated the membranes once again. I'm going ahead and open up the end cap and get the membrane out again. Got the 
water maker out on deck. Got the membrane out on deck, rather, that is. Um, yeah, can't remember which side I pulled out now, so I have to figure it out. The lip seal goes on the high pressure inside. Um, the seal is aiming towards the direction of flow, which is going to be high pressure in. It's a little hard to get this thing in sometimes, I just still comes it up, but I'm going to give a little press. It's all back together. With a little bit of finagling, I can really feel most hard to get the membrane in. Much tighter lip seal than the other one, maybe that's a sign. The other one just slid right in this one, I kind of had to maneuver the o-ring or lip seal a little bit with like a screwdriver to kind of get the squeeze on in the, in the membrane housing. Time for a test. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the water to it and plug it in and see what happens. Calico Skies only carries 60 gallons of fresh water, and we use about 12 or so per day. If our water maker isn't working, cruising the Sea of Cortez would not be a viable option for us. I'm going to truth here. That's much better, 400. See, this one is at 400. Yeah, let me just get it up to pressure now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Drawing about 1,100 watts, and the solar's putting in 900. Um, you can see we're down still for the morning 62%. Uh, we typically make water like later in the afternoon when the batteries are topped off, so I know for sure the batteries got to their float. But today, we're trying to go swimming in the morning, and we ran out of water last night in the tank. So um, I'm going to take a little bit earlier today because we're about to go swimming. We need to be able to wash it off ourselves in the gear. Uh, we do have a whole, so the way we run our water maker is we have a 25 gallon tank on port and we have 40 on starboard. We always keep the 40 on starboard full, we don't really touch it, uh, just kind of like an emergency, the water maker spazzed out and then we just continuously use our 25 gallon tank on port and it usually lasts about two days, so we're using like 12 gallons a day or so. Yeah, yeah. But the power on these new solar panels is insane. Yeah, like we're routinely, so we have 1500 watts total. Uh, we're routinely seeing 11, 1200, which is pretty high efficiency. Like, it's pretty hard to hit your rate of capacity. They've been a huge upgrade for us. Uh, yeah, Sun Powered makes some good panels. They're definitely way more efficient than normal solar panels would be. They are double the cost, but you get what you they pay for have, sometimes. Don't they have like a crazy warranty? Yeah, it's like a 10 year warranty on a boat or 40 on a house, so. We are going diving and we're gonna try and catch dinner. Well, Bill's gonna try and catch dinner. I'm gonna try and catch him catching dinner on film. <laughs> we just found a new leak in the dinghy. A water leak. Dang, this thing's getting a little bit old. It's uh, 2016? We're pushing her now. Yeah, we're pushing it. Nothing lasts forever. Nope. Especially not in this. I mean, especially when they get abused every day like ours, you know? It's been a well used dinghy. agile jumper actually. That was more than she's done before. She like, might want to come back out.
Look at that. Did I hit him? Uh, I don't think so. Alright, we're going to get a Bill missed that hogfish, but managed to catch two groupers for tonight's dinner. Get a little tomato and cucumber salad with the last cucumber we have and the last tomato we have. Grouper is uh, basting, maybe is what you call it. I have my breadcrumbs ready to go. Got Craig, got Crystal. We're here for the grouper. We got, we got Weezy. We're here for the AC. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to be real. <laughs> I'll add more for the next batch. This is our first fried fish experience. We did it in tacos last time. My last lemon. Rut row. Yeah. So excited. Let's see. Okay, so this one I think was the the big one was the leopard grouper. And one was like a golf grouper? Oh my god. That good? was so good. Nice. Mm -hmm. We are out of here. <laughs> it is a hot one again. We are on our way to our second most southern spot for the season. Uh, it's 40 miles from yep. here, so it's about 9 a.m. Um, it's gonna take most of the day and it's probably gonna be a motor, but that's okay. We just keep reminding ourselves that on the way back north, we should be getting a lot of wind um, going in the right direction. Absolutely gorgeous spot. This morning I had some thoughts while I was on the bow, just looking at the fish in the water. It's like, maybe I don't want to leave, maybe I'm not ready. I have very fond memories already of this spot. And we were only here for like two days. <laughs> yeah, but it is time to see something new. Yeah. Although we could be out here on our own, it doesn't mean that we want to be. And we're happy to be making the hop down today with our buddy boat sailing vessel, Small World. The Sea of Cortez is a truly unique spot where the desert meets the turquoise sea. It is spectacular and reminds us of nowhere else on earth. But cruising here, especially at the height of summer, is not without risk. Fresh water is key to our survival out here. And thanks to the hot desert sun and cloudless skies, our solar panels thrive in this environment, providing power not just for water making, but also for fridges, the ice machine, and our AC all of which make our travel here possible. We have our first dolphin sighting. Yeah, look at those guys, they have big fins. They have big back fins. Yeah. Definitely a bit of a different species, yeah, huh? I've never seen these types. Very hooked fins. It's a very pretty spot. Yeah. It's really hard in the Sea of Cortez to get accurate forecasts, especially up north where we are. Um, we're going between two islands headed towards the Bay of ALA. Well, actually the mainland and an island. And the wind is just funneling in the 20s. Uh, it's very localized. The weather shows like blue, like five or six knots, but it is not that. Um, there's also a current ripping with us, which is also stacking up the waves a little bit more. Uh, so the Northern Sea is not for the faint of heart. It is not the easiest sailing. Um, 
we didn't leave yesterday because it was too gnarly, but there's a lot of bees and a lot of rolling where we were. Uh, so we opted to make a run for it today and give it a shot. 25 knots on the nose. Woohoo! I think yeah, the deck of is pretty cool up there. Be alive. whistling. Love that sound. in Alcatraz which I don't know if you guys remember but we were here last time with Delos and One Life and that's where we had the little adult summer camp on this beautiful the competition. white sand beach um, so I have very happy memories of being here and we were kind of uh, rushing at that point last season so we definitely would have stayed longer if we had more time so I'm happy to be back to explore yep it's cool yeah So much has changed since we were here last year with our friends on sailing vessel Delos and sailing vessel One Life. It truly feels like a lifetime ago. But looking around, the beach, the water, it all looks exactly how it did the last time we were here. Time is a weird thing. Waking up after a long night for Bill. Not as long of a night for me. I slept through a lot of it. <laughs> the Bosco report said it was a calm night on the Baja. They lied. Yeah. And that's the most wind I think we've seen yet. 40 knots. Yeah, and it 
rarely rains yeah, here. Yeah, poured. So, yesterday when we bashed our way up here, we got like a saltwater rinse, and last time we got a freshwater rinse. So ducks are actually like, I think finally that penasco dust is off the boat. I actually have an appointment, an oncology um, appointment, that I'm gonna do via telehealth in a few minutes. And thankfully the anchorage is really still right now after this crazy storm all night. Um, so I should have a good connection because sometimes Starlink, when you move around a lot, it like loses connection. So I'm happy about that. Having Starlink is a godsend. Not only does our floating home have power, but we have connectivity now too. I hope it's not more than 20 feet. No, it does. That's the other. a bit of fuel motoring down here because predominantly southerly winds and we are traveling south. Uh, so the time has come to add fuel to the bow tank, which is a new process for us. It's kind of cool though. We're going to put it through a Baja filter and uh, then I'll use the pump to put it through whenever we need it. That tank is pretty close to full, but I just want to get these off the weight deck, keep the weight down. So here's our jugs. We have nice new covers made, which is cool. Amongst the rays that are jumping all around the boat right now. Yeah. We're getting a little show, a nature show. Got our Baja filter there. Our increased fuel capacity means we can remain off grid longer, which in turn means we aren't stressing about getting to the next port. We can take our time and let the weather dictate our travel schedule. This is great because it gets to wait off the side of the boat and into the low down in the bowels. <laughs> See how like stuff floating around? Ugh, that's why you've got to filter your fuel and we're double filtering because we're going through the Baja and then through the Raycor before it hits our fuel tank in the back and then the fuel tank in the back has a fuel filter and then the fuel filter on the engine. So we're like really, we've had fuel issues and I don't want to go back. Right now with these incredible Mobula rays putting on a show all around us, that feels pretty good. Fun fact, Mobula rays are part of the same family as Manta rays. So cool. They're big rays. They're really big. Whoa. And unlike stingrays, lack a stinger. They are known for their spectacular breaching behavior, though scientists still don't know exactly why they do it. It is such a beautiful evening. Um, there's a ton of fish just all over the bow of the boat. And um, there's a seal, a turtle, and I just saw a coyote on the beach. Just beautiful weather. And like, the water is just sparkling. Bill's setting up my bow tent. I'm just starting to get too much sun. Because I'm starting to get too many freckles. I'm reapplying my sunscreen a lot, so that's how I know I'm getting a lot of indirect yep. sun. This guy's gonna land, yep. Here comes a frigate bird. I'm all over the place with here, like breathing.
this has become an evening ritual. We, Craig reads the Chabasco report, um, which sometimes is and is not accurate, but we still collectively listen to Craig read the report. That's we're about to do now. Oh, it's not good. snap. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I need after last night. <laughs> well, we, they warned us if it's like that night one. It's gonna be like that night probably two. Probably hasn't changed for night two. Here we go. Uh, Fireworks at 4 a.m. Our deck uh, is gonna be so clean. So clean. Well, you got no sleep last night. Nope. I was up most of the night watching the boat. It's yeah. just so hard to go back to sleep when it's blowing 40 knots out. Yeah. <laughs> There's lightning And there's lightning everywhere. Grace and I didn't have any problems. Yeah, Grace yeah. passed <laughs> Yeah, I slept. I Grace slept like a baby. Uh, Taco Bowl. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. So, Crystal and Craig That's brought cool. over Chibosco, all these yummy the things. <laughs> Ooh, your bowl is pretty. Colorful. To make taco rainbow. bowls with. It's kind of fun. It's a little different talk about like a burrito bowl idea, whatever it is. Uh -huh. Chipotle peppers, and then we, well, have, we don't have tortillas. Uh, lettuce, sour cream, you, cheese, onion, oh. combined a can of pork and a can of chicken, and seasoned it, and that's our meat. <laughs> Running low on fresh stuff, but a bite of this. Mm. Wake up. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Alright, you ready? Yeah, question's on, yeah. Alright, we'll make sure they get the Bye, Weezy. Come here, Weezy. Come here. Good girl. Are you going, you're going the wrong way, Craig? Ah! Start rolling, Craig. It's happening. <laughs> oh okay. my god. Let's see. Harder, Craig. <laughs> oh my god. I just gotta get momentum. We can make it. <laughs> yeah, it's 20 already, so. <laughs> we'll see. 